With the Extreme Force sneak peek right around the corner, I thought it would be a good idea to give you guys an idea of some of the new cards coming out that you may want to try pick up and consider putting them in either your side deck or in your staple box. So when listening to this top 10, take into consideration that I've tried to make sure that all of these cards are as generic as possible, so no archetypal cards, and as low rarity as possible too since I don't want to mislead you into getting yourself a place out of every secret mech knight or something and then wondering why you listen to me. Some of these cards are probably terrible right now, but they could be good in the future within certain contexts or formats, and that's the purpose of this video. Now let me tell you, it was a bit of a stretch to try find two good generic cards from this set, so some of these might be pretty underwhelming, but at least for now anyway. So number 10, Fire Prison. Now there's quite a few conditions to fulfill in order for this card to be good, but basically it's a field spell that says neither player can special monsters with a link rating lower than the link rating of a monster on the field. So you can basically make a big like giant link monster, activate this, and it's kind of like Vanity's Emptiness. So the conditions would have to be playing in a format where there are only really exclusively link monsters, and the deck would have to need a field spell. In previous formats of field spells, people would for example side one copy of Necro Valley that they can activate after they've gone off and set off a board. This would be the equivalent for that. Now I know it's a stretch, but you never know it could be a thing one day. Number 9, Axe Detonation. It's a trap card that says target one card you control and destroy it. So you could use it on like a Cosmo to summon a ship from your deck and then disrupt your opponent's plays. You could maybe use it in Fire King in the end phase to get a search off of Barong, but I'm mentioning this because there very well could be a deck in the future, or archetype one day, that really benefits heavily from being destroyed. So again, to reiterate, these are just suggestions for the future use and thinking in the wider context. Number 8, Downbeat. It's basically a reverse transmodify. You can downbeat Infernity Archfiend into Necromancer, then use that Necromancer to bring back Archfiend for an Infernity Launcher, and then go from there. This could be good in quite a few archetypes, but that's what came to my mind first, and again, perhaps in the future, we might see this being really good in decks that perhaps trigger in the graveyard and play multiple levels in their archetype. Number 7, Sensor Differentiation. This is like a reverse rivalry of Warlords. Each player can only control one type of monster. If you're playing a deck with multiple types, Skyfang Brigade or Evil Swarm comes to mind, this could be a really easy going first side card you can floodgate your opponent with. Number 6, Contacting C. With Burning Abyss Cherubini around the corner, I picked this card up because it's basically just another copy of Flying Sea and, well, we know how much Burning Abyss hates Flying Sea. Number 5, Inspect Border. This is basically a level 4 Majesty's Fiend. It's a level 4 light machine with 2000 attack. It can't be normaled or specialed while you control a monster. Each player can only attempt to activate effects up to the number of monster card types on the field, so Ritual, Synchro, XE, etc. So there's quite a few requirements needed to be fulfilled in order for this to be good, but this by itself could potentially steal a lot of games as a floodgate. Number 4, Data Trans Avatar Walk Kinesis. This is a hand trap that lets you move one monster your opponent controls. Should we end up in a format with Link monsters dominating, this could very well completely shut your opponent down if used at the right time by messing up their arrow placements. Number 3, Hey Trude Aid. Return all set traps and spells to the hand. If you're worried about lots of back row but not floodgates, then this is a fantastic card for going second that lets you open up OTKs. Number 2, Underclock Taker. It's a generic Link 2 that requires two effect monsters with an arrow pointing downwards. This is probably one of the best cards in the whole set after Electromite, and it's extremely underrated. An arrow pointing downwards from a Link 2 is very crucial and something we've been missing so this could help so many decks continue their plays. This could literally just be a vanilla monster and it would still be fantastic because of how generic and applicable it is, but its effect could actually be really useful for getting over big monsters as well. Basically, you can have one of their monsters lose attack equal to the attack of one of your monsters. It's a really, really great card, and I would really recommend you pick up one or two of these. Number 1, Saryuya Skulldread. Skulldeep Pass is now the new Firewall Pass, and being a generic Link 4 that lets you draw 4 and then special from hand, this is going to be amazing in basically any combo deck that can spam the field with monsters of different names. Now it's going to be quite expensive because, well, it's a secret, but if you do pull one, or if you can get it cheap, and nobody's offering you more than like $30 for it, I would definitely hold on to it even if you don't need it, because many decks can take advantage of a draw for to mulligan and special from hand. So that's my top 10 list of generic staples that maybe could potentially, possibly, theoretically, hypothetically be good in a vacuum one day that you can put in your staple box. If I've missed anything else or you think there's some other good cards in here, then please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, then share it and like it, and subscribe, and see you next time.